Breaking news. DJI's new medium format camera has leaked. It is huge. It has the potential to really bring down Sony, Canon, Nikon, but especially Fuji. I have the details. I have photos and I have some real bad news. But first, I have to thank our sponsor, Squarespace. Squarespace makes incredible websites for just about any purpose. Your photography or video portfolio, you can have it set up in just a few minutes. Make your brand absolutely amazing while controlling every aspect of the presentation, something you can't do on your social media. Check it out today. Just set it up at squarespace.com slash Tony completely free. I promise it has the potential to change your business, set up a store, take appointments from clients, create an entire brand. They even have like video editing and logo creation tools. You're going to love it. When you do use the coupon code Tony and get 10% off. Thanks Squarespace. And thank you to photorumors.com, which provides some of this information, though most of it is my own conjecture. First, here is a photo of the leaked DJI medium format camera. When I saw this, I was really shocked. I was like, that, it looks so much like the Hasselblad X1D that we reviewed, even the gold button. I thought Hasselblad made such a point of their signature gold shutter button. It would be really weird for DJI to rebrand it and just not change that one thing. So I did a reverse image search on it. And yeah, it's just, it's just some, picture of a Hasselblad X1D from a review. So that is totally fake. That photo totally debunked, but I was already really into this idea. And so I started researching and you know what I found? I found actual patents from DJI dating back to 2019, where they patented a camera that looks a lot like a Hasselblad X1D, but is not a Hasselblad X1D that does have some different design elements and really could be branded under DJI. And so it really made me think, could DJI release a medium for format camera and would they, and what would that mean for the industry? And they certainly could, I think they will. And I think it just might change everything really because DJI is coming at it from a very different direction. Why am I talking about a drone manufacturer making cameras? That seems absurd, right? Well, it's not. DJI is already one of the world's largest camera manufacturers and largely because they're located in China, whereas most other manufacturers are located in Japan, they have a very different take on things and the potential industry impact is absolutely enormous. Let's take a quick look at DJI's history so that we can understand their strategic direction and why this fits perfectly in. In 2013, DJI's first really public product was the Phantom Drone. And it was not an imaging product. It was just a drone. But a lot of people, including myself, strapped a GoPro on there. And it was all shaky and it was completely unintegrated and you couldn't see what the camera was filming. So DJI thought, all right, people like using this for imaging and not just flying. Let's make the Phantom 2 Vision literally the same year. That is the speed of DJI and well, Chinese engineering as a whole. The Phantom 2 Vision had an absolutely awful camera, but it could stream live video back to your controller. And that allowed you to see what you were shooting with. And that really improved the videos that people were making. And pretty soon, YouTubers, vloggers like myself started integrating them into their storytelling. DJI's integrated drone cameras continued to get better. And that was the Phantom 3 released the next year that we thought was actually good enough. So you didn't have to strap a GoPro on there anymore. And in 2015, DJI released the Zenmuse X5, which was an interchangeable lens camera that you could strap onto your Inspire, a big, huge, expensive drone. We bought this and tried to use it and actually hated it. But it did show that DJI was willing to make interchangeable lens cameras and interchangeable lenses. They actually made their own lenses. They had an entire platform that just kind of went away and you never heard much more about it. That same year, DJI bought Hasselblad, one of the most well-known storied camera brands of all time. They frequently talk about putting cameras on the moon. Hasselblad is a prestigious brand. And in 2015, we wondered, what is DJI doing? Are they going to enter the camera industry? Do they want the tech or just the brand? And that question has never really been answered. Since then, they've slapped Hasselblad on some of their drone cameras, even though they didn't have any Hasselblad characteristics. It just seemed like they were using the storied brand to try to bump up the price on some of their drones. 
but now I think they might actually do something a little more with it. In 2017, DJI released another interchangeable lens camera platform, the X7. This was APS-C, what they might call Super 35 in the video world, and they again made some lenses for it. But again, nothing much came of it. They made a few lightweight drone optimized lenses, but nothing particularly fast or particularly interesting. But wait, <laughs> in 2018, DJI expands horizontally more in the imaging industry. Now, instead of just making flying things and cameras, they're making gimbals that creators are putting their cameras onto. Ronin Osmo, Osmo Action comes out in 2019. That is a GoPro competitor. And keep in mind, it's crazy in 2019 to release an action camera. This is three or four years after the action camera market completely collapsed thanks to smartphones. Nikon made their key mission cameras in 2017 and then just quickly discontinued them because it was a flop because they just missed that peak. But in 2019, DJI took GoPro on in a dying market and they have done great. They have gotten significant market share and they were able to take on engineering challenges like complex software-based stabilization and they did a really good job. And they're already on their second generation of Osmo Action camera. To me, that tells me a lot about DJI as a company. They are agile in a way that we have not seen out of the Japanese camera manufacturers. And when they put their mind to something, they can get it done. And they can do so in a rapidly declining market while still managing to presumably squeak out a profit. This year in 2022, DJI expanded into wireless microphones, taking on Rode, which we use all the time. And again, they did a good job. It's still a first generation product, has some flaws. We're not going to use it, but the second generation I bet will be even better. And their pace of innovation is so great that I know I wouldn't want to be in an industry that DJI was competing with. So we see DJI started making out little flying gadgets and then decided they were in the imaging industry. And once they completely dominated the drone marketplace, they started expanding horizontally because a corporation's goal is just to grow and get bigger, right? So once you're already number one, you have a monopoly, where do you go? Well, now they're just expanding into everything video oriented. And indeed, video creators like myself know them, trust them, and use them. So what's next? Well, maybe it's a medium format camera, stills or video. Well, let's see why that makes sense because they own Hasselblad. Hasselblad has released cameras since DJI owned them and they definitely show the DJI influence, like the software on it, really good. So why would this new camera not just be Hasselblad branded instead of DJI branded? Let's talk about what Hasselblad is. It is this old prestigious company since the beginning of camera manufacturing. And as part of that legacy, there are values core to the company, like the use of leaf shutters in their lenses, which many of you probably don't know what they are, and it doesn't really matter. It's not an efficient way to do photography, but it is just one of their signatures. They also tend to have a flat color science, which at first glance seems bad and ugly when you look at it, but that is something that people appreciate about Hasselblad, and by the way, you can edit it to make it look great anyway. They're also made from luxury materials. They've become a luxury brand. And as part of that, it's not just the product, the images that it produces, but rather the experience. And they have a fantastic tactile quality. The Hasselblad X1D is really my favorite camera of all time to use because the user interface on it is so amazing and the materials and the feel of the shutter, they're all actually fantastic. But those things come at a real cost and they're not traits that all consumers are willing to pay thousands of dollars extra for. So they could just make a cheap Hasselblad, right? But that lowers the brand value as a whole. It would make it more difficult for them to sell their extremely premium cameras. It would be like BMW selling a front wheel drive car or Porsche selling an SUV, right? They would never do that. Kidding. They both did that and they pissed off journalists for exactly one news cycle and then they just sold millions of them. And maybe that is actually an argument for Hasselblad just moving down market a little bit. In fact, the Hasselblad brand is just not that precious. In the past, they have taken Sony cameras, slapped on a piece of wood on the handle, said some story about the moon and put a big H on it and then just marked it up by like five times to make massive profits on it. 
DJI also just slaps Hasselblad on any old drone camera, adds 500 bucks to the price and calls it a day. The drone cameras labeled with Hasselblad don't have any of the normal Hasselblad characteristics. They're not large format. They don't have leaf shutters or anything. It's just a way to mark that technology as premium and get some more profit from it. So they're willing to do that and maybe they'd be willing to move down market. But at the same time, creating a separate brand is something that businesses use all the time. Look at Manfrotto and Gitzo. They are the same company. Manfrotto is day-to-day -day workhorse. Gitzo is premium stuff. Honda and Acura, Toyota and Lexus, DJI and Hasselblad. It could be that same relationship and I think it actually makes some sense. But some of you are gonna say, no, Tony, the camera market is collapsing in on itself. It would be absolutely insane for a new company to start making stills cameras when all these companies like Olympus just literally sold the business, they can't stay afloat. So why would DJI enter this market right now? Well, the high-end camera market is actually doing great, not losing any value at all. And we see Fuji, Sony, Olympus, Panasonic, all of them are focusing on the high-end. Nobody really at all is making $500 cameras anymore. They all wanna sell you three, four, five, six thousand dollar cameras so that's the segment that dji hasselblad would be moving into and i think they can make a profit of it certainly fuji's making a profit on the gfx cameras at least they say that in their quarterly reports dji is also like 90 percent of the way there they have all of hasselblad which actually knows how to make cameras dji really knows how to do influencer marketing something that a lot of the japanese camera companies have not really figured out they have fantastic engineers that have been able to produce products really quickly to the point where they completely dominated the drone industry and honestly they're probably bored they also have a real software expertise that's something that is not prevalent in japanese companies but china is good at their mobile apps are excellent and of course the chinese manufacturing is famous worldwide if you're in shenzhen and you think of a product it seems like you can manufacture a million of them in just a couple of weeks dji also has a whole host of technologies that canon nikon sony really aren't great at like this controller here has a super bright screen that i can see in the sun even though none of the japanese camera manufacturers have figured out how to get me a sunlight readable screen these drones also have internal storage so i don't have to use a memory card it has a gps which very few cameras have different dji drones can do high speed and raw video they have that expertise they also have the ability to do stable remote wireless links to your phone something that technically you can do with other cameras but it doesn't really work nearly as well the dji mobile apps are good they're solid they're reliable they're continually updated and i promise you can't say that about your camera's app right now. Some of these drones have cellular links so they can communicate directly to the cellular network, not inside the United States thanks to various restrictions, but they do have that technology. The Wi-Fi transfers are much faster than I've seen out of any of the smartphones. They have mobile firmware updates that are really easy to use. You don't have to like hook it up to your computer or load a memory card into your computer. They have open APIs like DJI openly embraces learners and tinkerers so you could get a dji drone and then completely program it or you could make a new mobile app that just completely takes over the drone and that embraces a whole market that the japanese companies have completely shunned they have worked really hard to lock the tinkerers out and if dji could take this approach to cameras they would instantly see there are so many buyers eager for those unique traits that we've just been starving for, that we've been denied for no particular good reason. DJI is missing some big pieces of this new camera though. Like they don't have a great video autofocus tracking system yet. And that's something that every company is really struggling with, except for Canon and Sony. Like they've got it worked out. They can lock on my face and not lose it. But pretty much all the other camera manufacturers are really struggling in that one field. It seems to be hard to do. They also, to my knowledge, don't have a sensor stabilization technology, which a big medium format camera with a high resolution sensor that really is gonna need some kind of stabilization to produce good shots. Those are my thoughts on the DJI medium format camera, but while I have you, I wanna share the rumors of the Hasselblad X1D 100C. This is a medium format camera that would look a lot like their current X1D medium format camera, which we absolutely love, by the way. 
but it would have a proper 100 megapixel sensor. That means it would produce image quality similar to the $6,000 Fujifilm GFX 100 and 100S, but with a better overall experience, like with luxury materials. And if you are already springing $6,000 for a camera, I bet you might be willing to spring a couple thousand dollars more to have that like Hasselblad luxury experience. I'm excited to review this camera. And in fact, I already reached out to Hasselblad to let them know I'd love a pre-release version of it. So subscribe to see that review when it hopefully is released. But I do already have some concerns, the same concerns we had with the original X1D which is that the autofocus was behind and the video capabilities were way behind. And in fact, medium format is not a great sensor size for video. Like it can just physically take longer to do a readout from a medium format sensor. Things like rolling shutter are going to be more of a problem. Sensor stabilization is more difficult because the larger sensor has more mass and thus it's more difficult to move around. They're sort of fighting an uphill battle in the video field by going to medium format, but video is so important to DJI and something like 50 to 70% of camera buyers now are hybrid shooters who want to shoot video too. So I question whether this will be a hybrid camera or just a stills centric camera. I think it can be a success either way since it's carving out such a narrow niche for itself. But I think under the ownership of DJI, Hasselblad could have made some pretty strong strides in these fields. So I'm excited to check it out. Thank you to our sponsor, Squarespace, who makes this possible and we make amazing websites possible. If you can imagine it, you can make it at squarespace.com slash Tony. Set up a website for your personal project, your business, your family, whatever it is. Get your own custom domain so you're not yahoo.com or gmail.com. You can be yourlastname.com. If you don't yet have that, you know where to go, squarespace.com slash Tony. Try it out completely free. And when you love it, the coupon code Tony will get you 10% off. In the comments down below, I'd love to hear what you think of the possibility of a DJI medium format camera. Why DJI not Hasselblad? Bye.